Right, so welcome back to Retro Break Gameplay. Today I'm going to be playing some Neo Geo games for next week's video. I've been given a list of great games by uh, various different people on Twitter that I want to try out. But first I'm starting out with a game that I personally want to play for the system. And the reason I'm going through these Neo Geo games now is because I've actually got the Mister working with uh, Neo Geo ROMs. So this is actually all coming from the Mister now. And I apologise for the bad lighting and possibly bad audio. It's loud outside and unfortunately, because of the setup at the minute, all I can use is my laptop's webcam for capturing the um, face, unfortunately. But hopefully, in a few months time, I'll get a new game room in the new house and it should look a lot nicer. I've got loads of stuff in my wish list on Amazon. I'm just going to move that down there so I can see a bit better. And let's carry on. So as I was saying, um, I've got loads of stuff in my wish list on Amazon. Um, like a new, a new lens for the camera, first of all, as well as an extra tripod that I can have behind the desk, which I think will be really good because then I can actually have two camera setups permanently. I can have one sort of behind the screen and then I can have another one where I'll just do my normal videos. And then hopefully once I've got all that set up, along with some soundproofing, because it's probably a bit echoey in here still, especially considering uh, there's becoming less and less things in here as the days go on and as we're getting closer to moving house. But hopefully with a bit of soundproofing on the walls and with a full set of shelves behind me in the new room as well, the sound quality should be a lot better as well. I mean, hopefully it's better anyway because of this new microphone that I'm using now but it should be a lot better. I just realized I've got a homing attack as well. So I didn't actually introduce the game I'm playing here. So this is a game called Andrew Andro Dunos, I think it's called. And the reason I'm playing this is because the sequel, Andro Dunos 2, is actually coming out later this year for the 3DS, the Dreamcast, and the Neo Geo. Yeah, a weird set of systems. I think it's coming out on the Switch as well, but I've actually ordered the 3DS version and I thought it'd be really interesting to start out this uh, Neo Geo games episode with a look at what the original Andro Dunos is like for the Neo Geo and unfortunately so far I have to say it's a pretty mediocre shooting game. Maybe I'm missing some features, some gameplay features but all I really seem to be doing is just mashing the A button and slowly making my way forward without too much trouble. Or maybe that's the wrong word, like I am dying but it doesn't really seem like there's much going on on the screen if that makes sense. Like it seems like quite a slow game. But uh, from what I've heard there are some other better shoot em ups for the system. Pulsar or Pulsar, that's one that I've got coming up that I'm going to be giving a go a bit later on. And I should actually get up my list of games that people have told me to try out and give some of them a go in a, go in a minute. But for now, let's do a few more levels of this and see whether it improves. I'm not sure whether the second one actually did get a release on the Neo Geo in the first place and they're actually re-releasing it. Or whether it's never had a release before and this is it's actually a brand new game for the system. Okay, so you can press the B button to change weapons. Unfortunately, there's no auto fire, so I am having to mash the A button. So hopefully some of these other shoot em ups in a bit actually have auto fire. Else I might end up with a very sore thumb in a minute. I love the fact that I've got my Mister set up for the CRT as well. It's so good to be able to play it on this screen and record footage at the same time compared to having to look through the capture card or play the games on a flat screen, which isn't really how they're meant to be played. But yeah, this game seems really um, kind of generic, to be honest. If I'm completely honest, I'm not really that into it at the minute. It seems very slow paced. Let me know in the comments if you've ever played Andro Dunos before on the Neo Geo, whether you've played it in the arcade or whether you've played it on the actual system. Were you lucky enough to actually have a Neo Geo when they were around? 
I don't know anyone who had one, to be honest. And man, yeah, this boss is boring. Right, so I kind of gave up on Andro Dunos, so let me just share my desktop, and hopefully you can see there I've got a list of 35 games that people have sent me over, so let's try out the first game that I've got on this list, which is called Pulsar, or Pulsar, sorry. So let's see if it's on this list of ROMs that I was given. P Pulsar, there it is. So let's give Polestar a try, see what this is like. Apparently this is one of the better shoot 'em ups for the system. A system that's mostly known for fighting games, but... That's a nice animated logo. And a nice introduction. Nice anime... Uh, animation. Really smooth actually, wow. Really nice smooth background there as well. And of course, bright green hair, because why not? So anyway, let's get this show on the road, one player. One thing I love about all the Neo Geo games that I've played so far is the fact that they have this screen with the controls and the buttons being pressed. It just reminds me of really good childhood memories of being at the arcades on, on holiday in France and stuff and playing things like Metal Slug or Puzzle Bobble and seeing the arcade stick controls like this. I really do love that. So, that's pretty interesting. You can choose any stage right from the start. Uh, hopefully the sound isn't like overlapping between the game and the uh, capture, because there is a little bit of a lag. So, okay, it's another one of those games where you can charge up. Oh, this one's got pretty cool 3D graphics, or should I say pre-rendered 3D graphics. I wonder if there's another weapon that I've got, because it looks like the... Uh... No, it looks like that's the only button I've got that does anything. It's quite strange, and the ship seems to move quite slowly. Kind of like R-Type style controls a bit. I prefer my shoot em ups a bit faster. I wonder if there's a uh, speed up button. Maybe there's a power up you can get to speed it up. Yeah, unfortunately, so far, like Andre Dunos, I'm not really that impressed. It seems quite slow paced. The only impressive thing about this so far is the graphics, I'd say. Like, if I saw this at the time, I'd be really impressed with it. Wow. Yeah, this is just a rip off of our type. It's even got the same. It's got the same power-up system, it's got the same shield ship coming out the front of the ship. It's just like a sh slightly prettier version of R-Type. And R-Type, I have to say, is one of my least favourite shoot em ups Because, like I said, I prefer my faster pace guns, to be honest. And I prefer them to be vertical rather than horizontal as well, so... Yeah, this isn't really doing it for me, unfortunately. Let's see if it picks up. I'll give it till the end of this stage. Wow, even this is very, very R-type in its design. You can tell they just wanted their own R-type for the arcades. But it is not bad. It seems really easy. Doesn't really seem like you have to dodge much. I guess I'm too used to bullet hell. Here's the first boss. Okay, that's pretty cool how it's like sucking the walls in. Wow, nice morphing animation there as well. That is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, not quite on par with that giant monster thing from our type. I can see they were going for a very similar um, look and feel, even with this boss. Oh, that went straight into me. So, where's that going to restart me? Okay, so the only way to speed up is by picking up those speed up power ups. As I've got 35 games, I might record this over 
several different days, so yeah, this isn't that great. What's next on my list? Blazing Star, that's another shoot 'em up, I think. I'm glad I have this as a way of playing Neo Geo games. I'd hate it if I had to spend like a thousand pounds to play one of these and then find out I didn't enjoy it. Which I'm sure some people have. Yes, I love those screens. Another one with really nice 3D pre-rendered graphics. I wonder if this is made by the same people that did um, Gates of Thunder. And whatever the other one's called. Winds of Thunder? Wings of Thunder? Okay. Oh, I'm already much preferring this one. It's Okay, you've got loads of different difficulty options here. Let's see. And again, it has a, um, a charging up meter. Um, I was lost for words then. The graphics are really nice on this one. Um, there's no enemies yet. Here's some. Yeah, I have to say these are the best graphics out of the three that I've played so far, but let's see whether the game lives up to uh, the way it looks, because we know that's not always the case. Yes, I'm much preferring this one already. It's kind of like a side-scrolling version of Dodon Patchy. Just a lot simpler. As well. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I love how smooth it is on the CRT. You won't get it, but the, the way the screen scrolls, it's just kind of like... Kind of mesmerising how smooth it is. Ah, I didn't see that then. I think I've got this on the Switch, actually. I definitely uh, recognise these graphics. I think this is one of those arcade archive games. I don't know what those lucky enam enamel pin things do. Maybe I should have picked a har harder difficulty. The big one is closing in. Oh yes, now I've got a really nice big laser as well. Yeah, I definitely prefer this over the Polestar. Yeah, this is really cool. And let's go full power. I kind of like this one because it's not trying to rip something else off like the other one was. And I like it a lot more than Andro Dunos because that was just really slow paced. And felt kind of simple. It felt kind of like... I don't know whether that was the company's first shoot up maybe, but... You beat it. Your skill is great. Not really. It didn't really have a chance to attack me. Wow, that is a nice background. I think the Neo Geo is actually more powerful than people actually give it credit for, because this looks like it could have been on the PS1 or the Saturn. It really does. I presume it's pre-rendered, but because of how clear it is, it doesn't really seem like that. And yeah, the, at the time, if I had a Neo Geo, comparing this to anything you can get on the SNES or the Mega Drive just completely blows it out of the water. In terms of smoothness and in terms of the resolution and the frame rate and everything, way, way better. It's just a shame it was so expensive, so it never really took off. And now, uh, of course, SNK is trying to breathe some life back into the Neo Geo. They keep re-releasing the system and giving it weird special editions and things, but nothing really that exciting because it's all just sort of repeats of what they've already done. It'd be really good if they actually came out with a new system or arcade board or something, that'd be really cool. But I don't really see that happening, they're kind of just pandering towards the nostalgia market at the minute. Which isn't bad, I mean, companies have got to do what they've got to do to survive, I suppose, and there wouldn't really be a market for a brand new system from them in this day and age. I don't think so, anyway. Uh, I didn't do that. Again, although this is better, it's still quite slow-paced, especially considering it's 
you know, supposed to be a really action-packed shoot em up. Like, there's not really that much going on. I guess it's more spectacle over level design. But it does feel a little bit just thrown together. Not really as compact or engaging as something like... I'm trying to think of a good side-scrolling shooter. Thunder Force 3 or Thunder Force Spirits if you're in the arcade. I think that's a more well-designed. Or well, Gates of Thunder as well. That's another side-scrolling one that I really enjoy. I'd say this is a bit more basic than them. I mean, it certainly looks nicer, but in terms of the design, it seems like they're just throwing things around for the sake of it. Well, it's not terrible, but at the same time, it's not really amazing either. Here we go, let's see what the next boss is like. And then after this, I'll move on to the next game and just pause quickly and see whether the recording came out okay for this one. Because I'm a little bit worried about the sound, so hopefully it was alright. I've played too many shoot em ups to know that. Um... Okay, I can choose a different ship. Let's see what's different about this one. Apart from the fact that it fires green things. Are these like homing attacks maybe? Or bombs? It's a shame that you have to build up that meter because you'd only ever really want to use it full so it'd be good if they swapped it to a different button and then you could just hold down the A button to constantly shoot. I think that would actually be better. It's pretty cool though. Hopefully no one watching has epilepsy because things are um, flying around a lot and there's a lot of flashing lights so maybe I'll put a warning at the start of this video just in case. There we go that's the second one done so the third game we're looking at which I'll get to now is Nam 1975. So here we have game number three Nam 1975 and memory card load? No I don't have a memory card. The first thing I noticed about this let me just move down a bit, there we go. The first thing I noticed about this, it was a bit jumpy, wasn't it? The first thing I noticed was the fact that this is actually fully voice acted, which is pretty cool, but I am going to skip it just so we can get straight to the gameplay and take out these guys here. This is uh, very similar to Sunset Riders, um, which is a really cool Western version of this for the SNES and Mega Drive. Uh, I haven't found out how to jump yet. Maybe I should have... Maybe you can't jump. Maybe you can only dodge like that. This is actually really difficult. This is a lot harder than I thought it was. I also was under the impression that this was a, a forward scrolling sort of shooter, not a um, sort of... I don't even know what you'd call this kind of game, like shooting gallery with a separate movement layer. Yeah, I'm really not doing very well on this. This is very difficult, because you have to... Ah, oh, okay, so you can hold down X to run or dash out of the way. Or run into the way. Whoops. Yeah, this is difficult. I'm, in, I'm enjoying it though, but I wish there was a way to jump. Unless I'm just not um, understanding something properly. Yeah, he seems to move really way too slow, like, without holding the button down. It's like you're hardly moving at all. On Sunset Riders, when you're moving from side to side, you kind of move across the screen, so it's a bit weird going from that to this, which is you move at a snail's pace if you stand still, which is very strange. And when you're actually shooting, you stop completely, as far as I can tell. Man, I would be losing my money so fast if this was in the arcade. Maybe that's why they made it so difficult. Go and make money. Yeah, this isn't great. I can see why people enjoy this, but I feel like it would take a lot of getting used to a lot longer than I've got. Just to... Um, 
in the few minutes that I'm doing a quick overview. So I'm giving that one a pass. So no to Nam 1975, but yes to Blazing Star. Now the next one, I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy this because it doesn't really sound that interesting, but the next one is called League Bowling. So let's see whether that's on here. There it is. Let's see what this is like. I don't really know how a bowling game could be that exciting. But if anyone could do it, it'd be SNK. First of all, really weird graphics. I'm not, oh my god, I'm not a fan of those graphics. They are weird. They're like really Americanized, cartoony graphics and um, I mean, yeah, it seems okay, but I don't really get why you would choose to play this over anything else on the system. It's responsive, it controls well, but I mean, it's just bowling. Yeah, I don't really have anything more to say about that, just sure, it's a bowling game, and it's okay. Now, Garrow, Mark of the Wolves. This one is a fighting game, which the Neo Geo is very well known for. Of course, a lot of the games on the system were fighting games. I'm not really a huge fighting game fan, so I'm not sure how well I'll do at this, but let's just jump straight in. I'll just pick whoever's first and see whether I can figure out any of the controls. I'm terrible at fighting games, by the way, so don't expect me to do very well. I have to say, the uh, graphics are really nice. Very, very smooth and solid. Solid sprites. I have no idea what I'm doing, though. So that is like a heavy punch. But he doesn't really go very far. That's a light punch. Ooh, jumping in the air with a heavy punch was good. Right in the head. I'm amazed at the graphics on here. The sprite work is amazing. Why didn't why didn't not more people talk about this? Surely this is on par with Street Fighter. I mean, like I said, I'm no fighting game fan, so. Okay, so block is hold back. Um, that is heavy kick, I suppose. That's light kick. And the shoulder buttons don't do anything. I'm not sure how I'm doing those specials. I'm just doing what are they call quarter circle punch. That's the only thing I know about Street Fighter. Yay! Somehow, somehow I did it. Some nice anime cutscenes in between as well. Oh, and a really nice little overview video there before you go into the stage. Wow. Yeah, I can see why uh, fighting game fans love the Neo Geo so much. This is really good. And that's coming from someone who thought they wouldn't enjoy themselves with a fighting game, so... Maybe if I actually put the time in to learn this, I wouldn't actually mind, you know, getting better at this game. The only fighting game I'm any good at is Smash Bros, if that even counts. I guess I'm good at Dead or Alive and... Um, Soul Calibur. I'm not really that good at 2D ones. I think I'm either good at 3D like arena fighters like Soul Calibur or like party fighting games like Smash, but that's only only because I played them a lot back in the day at school and after school and at college. I used to love at college when we would actually bring the GameCube or the Wii in and hook it up to the projector and everyone would take turns fighting each other on Smash. Hopefully he didn't catch that. Hopefully I muted in time. There's a bike going past outside. So, Garrow Mark of the Wolves is a definite thumbs up from me. Now, next is Sengoku 3. I wasn't asking Siri. Sengoku 3. I don't know what this game's like. Looks like another fighting game. Maybe. So I won't spend too much time on this one, but let's just see what's different. Looks like it's got a nice hand-drawn art style. Definitely nowhere near as polished as Garrow Mark of the Wolves. Okay, this one's actually a beat-em-up, which is pretty cool, like Final Fight, 
Streets of Rage style. Uh, I guess is good for the arcade, but again, not really a huge fan of beat em ups. I find them very repetitive. The only one I've ever really enjoyed is Scott Pilgrim, and that reminds me that I'm still waiting for it to come from Limited Run. I'm sure it's been about a year by now. Yeah, I don't really get what the appeal of this one is. This is very basic. I hate in these sort of games how the screen just stops and you just have to kill everyone before you can move on. Like, it really slows the pace down. I mean, I guess that's the point, because the whole fun of these games is beating people up. Hence the term beat em up, but yeah, I'm not really a fan. So... Nice little dying animation there. But yeah, not really a lot to say about this one. Again, I'm glad I didn't spend a few thousand pounds to get it and then find out I don't like it. Can't even get him. I also don't like the fact that the different planes of uh, movement are very difficult. Why did I turn into a log? Yeah, the different planes are kind of difficult to tell where you line up compared to everyone else. And I think that will do it for this. Let's see what the next game is on the list. And it is uh, Shock Troopers. Which is there. Let's see what this is like. Nice intro, and it's got the controls that I really like, and a cool set of characters to choose from. But as I'm just trying to get a feel for these games, I'm only just going to go with whatever the first choices are. Ah, this is what I was thinking that other game was going to be like. Although, playing a game like this with no second analog stick is a bit difficult. Oh, okay, so that's how you aim and move in the same direction. Yeah, this is a pretty cool game. I like this. The graphics are kind of basic, and unfortunately the side of the screen is cut enough on the CRT, so I don't think I've got the settings quite right for the screen, for the screen size, but you guys can see it fine on the capture card footage. Okay, so there's a dodge button as well. Ah! Yeah, this is pretty good. I can see myself really enjoying this in the arcade. There we go. So X is throw grenades. Go. B is dodge. Y does nothing. I don't know whether the colours are a little too bright. I might pause in a bit and try and adjust them. Make them a bit more similar to what I'm seeing on the screen. They seem a bit too um, saturated. From what I can see there. The one thing I don't really like about this is the fact that the character actually controls very slowly if you're not dodging. Kind of the same problem that I had with the other game. It may look fast but it's definitely moving too slow because I can feel my thumb cramping up. Maybe it'd be better playing it on um, an arcade stick but with this fake SNES pad that I'm using the um, I'm actually using the Game Freak controller. I was trying to think what it was called. Yeah, Game Freak. Which is a really cool emulation device, if you're interested. I did do a video when it came out about four or five years ago now. Still a good video. Still goes into lots of detail about the system. So, yeah. I think I'm about done. I've got a good idea of what this game's like. And Shock, Shock Troopers is definitely a pass. In my opinion. So, yeah, really enjoyed that. Next is Mutation Nation. That's an interesting name. L M N Mutation Nation. Here we go. Number eight. Oh, thirty-five. Slob. Okay, this is a beat em up as well. Hey, I think I already like this one more. It's faster, it's more colourful. Mm, the proportions are a bit weird. Uh, 
Okay, so attack is the same button as picking things up. Okay, that is weird. <laughs> it's weird enemy designs. Yeah, the graphics aren't quite as good as the intro made me uh, believe. There's a lot of dithering going on in the background there. And some weird sprite scaling too. Also, it doesn't seem like it has quite as fluid attacks as that other beat em up. It seems a little stiff. Yeah, this is just a, a very basic Streets of Rage clone, I'd say. Nothing too exciting. But not bad if you like that sort of game, I suppose. But yeah, I don't really... I don't really enjoy these kind of games. I'm more into the shoot 'em ups or the puzzle games when it comes to arcade experiences. Maybe these are fun in two-player, but as I'm not doing two-player for this video. Uh, yeah, I didn't really enjoy that one, so probably a no for Mutation Nation. Now the next one is called Nightmare in the Dark. I have no idea what this one's like. And I'm just going to quickly try and change the filter on here to um, see whether that fixed the slightly overly saturated look. I think it's a bit too far the other way now. It looks a bit too dark. Let's see if that helped. Yeah, that looks better. So, fire, jump, fire. Okay, this one looks like a platformer. Or maybe a puzzle platformer. That's another style of game that I really love. Oh yes, puzzle platformer. I do love a good puzzle platformer. But is it a good puzzle platformer? Uh, uh, okay. That's quite a lot to do just to kill an enemy, so first you have to set them on fire, and then you have to keep setting them on fire, and then you have to turn them into a big flaming ball, and then you have to fire them around the stage until they blow up and turn into crystals. That is very long-winded, but I really like the graphics. It's got a really nice style to it, and from what I can hear through these headphones, it sounds like it's got a good soundtrack as well, but... Um, yeah, maybe they went a bit overboard on how you're actually supposed to kill these enemies. I guess they were going for the... Um, was it Rodland style? Where you have to keep hitting the enemies in order to trap them and then you can fire them back off. I think I'm thinking about Rodland anyway. Again, I don't know what it is with these Neo Geo games, but the character moves really slowly. I couldn't even get over to that in time. I do really like this though, I have to say. This is probably one of the more fun games that I've played so far, even if it does take way too long to trap the enemies. I guess it's just to give you time to worry about other enemies coming up and line up the combos like that as well. But yeah, quite enjoying this. I'll do a few more stages and then we can move on to... Metal Slug. That game needs no introduction. Let's do two more levels. A lot of these stages seem very similar in their layouts. I don't think it's quite as imaginative as Bubble Bubble or a game like that. I wonder what happens if I get two of them. Oh, if you take too long they actually go out of their ball form. So you can't spend too long. I also wonder if the screen loops around like it does with some of these other games. Uh, come on, let me go and get that. I'm not sure whether it actually goes out of its ball form if you carry it around for too long. Yeah, I'm quite enjoying this. One more stage. Let's do one more. This is a very basic looking level. The animation on the main character is really nice. Okay, finish on a boss fight, that's cool. Do I have to do something special? Oh, I probably have to kill an enemy and hit them into him. So, Can they jump up here? Mm, he can. 
Let's see if I can get him here. Quick! Oh no. Where am I? Yeah, that is the right idea, but I'm kind of stuck. Let's get this guy over the end. Yeah, it takes too long. That's the only gripe I have with this game. Move up. Oh, that's better. That's how we should control to begin with. That shouldn't be a power-up. Quick! Yay! Loads of extras. Yeah, I feel like it starts you off a bit too weak. But yeah, cool game. Now, I'm just going to play Metal Slug for a little bit, because obviously the Metal Slug games are amazing, and you don't need me to tell you that. Probably the best thing that came out of the whole SNK Neo Geo system. They're all amazing games. I did actually play Metal Slug a lot in the actual arcades on holiday, back in the day. Uh, the controls, unfortunately, seem backwards for this controller, but it shouldn't be too hard to get used to just for this. Man, yeah, you really can't go wrong with Metal Slug. What a fantastic game. What a fantastic series. And the games just get better and better as well. It's like one of the only game series where they never messed it up all the way through. I just love it. And the um, anthology on the Wii is a really good way to experience all of them. Yeah. Definitely my favourite game on the Neo Geo. At least that I've played so far. Maybe that will change once we get to some of these other games that I'm going through today. But um, yeah, I'll just play through the first level of Metal Slug, so if you've never played it before, or if you've never seen it before, you can get an idea of what it's like. What it is like is amazing. Look at these amazing sprites. The smoothness of it, the, the fact that you can so easily tell where the enemy's bullets are and where yours are because of the colour scheme. Just everything really stands out really nicely. I really can't fault the game at all. If there's one, like, perfect arcade-style action shoot 'em up platformer, it's Metal Slug. Even the Neo Geo Pocket games are brilliant. Man, I am struggling a bit with these controls, though, because for some reason on this controller, B is jump and A is shoot, which is backwards compared to what I'm used to. But yeah, I won't bother playing any more of that. Just know that Metal Slug is one of the best games of all time. And now we are on to Aero Fighters. Or I suppose Aero Fighters 2. I don't know whether the original just isn't on here. Or maybe... Actually, before we start that... Whoops, what am I doing? Let's just go back. AES specific, is it on there? No. Fighters. Maybe there is no Aero Fighters 1. Or maybe it's on something else. Let's try Aero Fighters 2 then, see what I think about that. And this is the 11th game that we're looking at. And let's just try it on normal. Ooh, is this a vertical shooter? I did say I love my vertical shooters, and I did also say that I'm just choosing the first, uh, the first things, the first options. I think this is actually the first vertical shooter up that I've played so far, and so far it seems a little basic. Ah, is that the same power up as Gunbird? Is this a Psycho game? Is it Psycho? I think that's the company that made Gunbird and a lot of other shoot 'em ups around the same time. It does look very Gunbird like. I'm presuming this is from the same company. Not the most exciting intro level, though, I have to say. It just 
does just seem a bit like a poor man's riding. Oh, that's pretty interesting that the roofs explode like that. But Maybe it'll pick up. I'll give it a bit longer. But as you can see at the minute, not really posing any sort of challenge. And the fact that you can shoot the bullets that are coming towards you as well and just get rid of them kind of ruins any challenge as well. I guess that is something that a lot of shoot 'em ups did. Like, there's certain bullets that as long as you're shooting in front of, like these yellow ones here, you can just destroy them. Which I never really understood. Is it just to make it make the screen look busy? Like, that one you can't shoot, but the, the thicker yellow ones you can. Oh uh, yeah, let's try a bomb as well. That worked. Yeah, not really the most exciting intro stage. Usually intro stages are like really flashy because they try and get you into the game. Try and make it make a good impression. But that one kind of fell a bit flat. And to be honest, this level's fallen a bit flat as well. The whole thing feels a bit flat, like there's no shadows on anything, there's no real depth to anything. And compared to some of the earlier ones that used the um, 3D pre-rendered style, this one's just using really basic sprites. Like I think if they tweaked it slightly, you could probably get something very similar running on the Turbo Graphics or the Mega Drive without too much of a problem. So I'd say... I am enjoying this, but it feels a little bit amateur. Like, I don't know whether this is one of the first games that Psycho made, or whether I was just expecting more. I wonder if the sequel's any better, actually. Let's have a look. Aero Fighters 3 is on here as well. So, let's see whether they improved things with number 3. They improved the intro screen. That video system layout looks nicer. And looks like we got the same robot guy. And smaller sprites, for some reason. But apart from that, faster bullets. Let's see, yeah, smaller sprites, faster bullets, and... There we go, the bike's gone from outside. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you. It is very, very frustrating. That's another thing that I can't wait for when we move house to get away from this main road because there's constantly bikes and cars going past revving their engines because they just don't care about anyone which is very annoying so the one thing i have noticed about this compared to the first game is that it is a lot faster which is good i feel like the bullets for the enemies move slightly too fast it's kind of difficult to move out the way because the speed of your ship isn't really that different oh my god what is going on here so the bomb attack actually turns you into a giant robot. That was unexpected. So I think I am preferring this over the first one. As you can see as well, they've got slightly digitized 3D graphics. Well, I'm not sure whether they're just hand drawn and they are made to look 3D or not. But yeah, pretty cool. I'm enjoying this a bit more. Although I feel like they did just go for speed of bullets over actually improving the design of the levels and the stages and stuff because it still does look a little bit drab not really as bright and colourful as Gunbird which is one of my favourite vertical shooters but yeah definitely say this is better than the other one even if it does feel a little empty so that was Aero Fighters 2 two and three I suppose. Now next is Samurai Showdown. There's a lot of Samurai Showdowns. I'm just going to go with the first one and see what I feel like with that one. And of course this is a fighting game. I did actually play the most recent one on Stadia, believe it or not, Google Stadia, when I thought that might actually be something worth looking into, which it obviously wasn't. Again, Wow, SNK absolutely blowing it out of the water with the amazing sprite work in these games. I mean, maybe I'm not a fan of the fighting game genre, but I can definitely appreciate it. Like, even the animated backgrounds look really nice. But again, I have no idea what I'm doing. Although, I feel like maybe I like this style of combat more than Garrow. 
But the graphics in Garo Marker Walls were obviously a lot better. But I think that was quite a bit of a later entry in the series, in the console. Did I kill her then? Yay, I did. So, I'm going to try the latest Samurai Showdown as well, Samurai Showdown 5, just to see what the difference is like. Let's see how much it improved over the years. So the character select screen looks a lot more detailed. The zoom in looks a bit clearer. Wow, yeah, the um, attack animations really stand out a lot. Again, I still have no idea what I'm doing, but I can definitely appreciate good graphics and animation when I see it, and this is definitely very impressive. Yeah, somehow I won. Now let's go on to the next game called Street Slam. Which I don't have. Maybe it's called Street Hoop. Let's see. Data East. One of the companies that just seem to want to give their IPs away to anyone who's offering. Uh... Yeah, I doubt I'm going to enjoy this. I don't really like sports games. Especially ones where you change who you're playing as. Just randomly. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of Data East either. A lot of their games feel quite cheap. Yeah, I'm giving that one a no. I really can't be bothered with that. Let's try Wind Jammers instead, which is another sports game. A similar sort of style. I don't know whether I'm going to enjoy this or not, but I have heard a lot of good things about it. Again, I feel like Data East is just sort of a bit too... I don't really know what the word is. They just are always around and their stuff isn't really that good. But let's see. I've heard this is a good game, so again... So yeah, this is kind of dodgeball with frisbees, by the looks of it. Or volleyball with frisbees. Or air hockey. Pretty cool idea for a game, but I don't really think it's something that I would play for long. I mean, you've played it for a few minutes and you've probably... You know, you've already got a good idea of what the whole game is like. There's probably a lot of skill to it. And it'd probably be fun in two-player, but... Yeah, not really as good as people have been making it out to be. But maybe that's just me. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And so I'm going to give a no to Windjammers. Now next is a game called Last Resort. Which is here. So let's see what that's about. I was just looking at my face there on the webcam because unfortunately my headphones have broken recently and this left earpiece is just sort of hanging off loose because the thing that connects the two has snapped so I'll be getting a new um, set of headphones soon. I'm looking into some nice Sony ones so maybe when I've saved up a bit more money I can pick one of them up. Another horizontal scrolling shooter here. Nice graphics, nice atmosphere. You can tell someone was a fan of Akira and Blade Runner. Kind of reminds me of, um, what's that weird shooter on the SNES where the box art is that guy in the, in the desert looking up at the spaceship. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. You know which one I mean, the one with the amazingly, completely out there box art that's just brilliant and weird at the same time. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a game I actually really enjoy as well. Um, begins with a P. Never mind, I can't remember. But yeah, this seems pretty good. Kind of random enemy patterns though. I'm not really a fan of them just being on that wave shape. Feels like the designers didn't really want to come up with anything in particular for the enemies to do. And the other ones just seem to fly forward. But Overall, not bad. 
It started off faster than some of the other ones, which I appreciate. I don't like having to wait for speed power-ups. But, again, it's kind of weirdly slow, and it's also kind of weirdly a one of those ones where you have to build up the power meter and then you've got the extra ship like R-Type. I think R-Type influenced a lot of shoot 'em ups Which I guess is good, but at the same time I wish the designers were a little bit more unique in their approaches rather than all just using the same hold A to charge your power up and then you can send off your sort of second ship to attack things on your behalf. Like, I'm sure there's a lot more interesting mechanics that people could have come up with, rather than just reusing the same tried and true formula, but I guess people like what they know already, so can't really blame them too much for retreading old ground. I'd say this is a good game, but it doesn't do anything new. It doesn't bring anything new to the table. Which is a shame, because... I feel like a lot of the games on the Neo Geo are kind of riffs on existing ideas rather than bringing anything new to the table. Which is kind of why maybe it's not remembered so well in terms of like gaming history and influence on other games. Feels like they played it kind of safe and that maybe shot them in the foot a little bit in the long run. Or maybe I'm just talking nonsense, but that's kind of the feeling that I get from what I've played so far like they are good games but there's nothing to make them memorable compared to the games that they're inspired by does that make any sense am i talking sense or am i talking nonsense please let me know in the comments it has been a long day and we've had a lot of paperwork to sign for Hanks, so maybe my head's not completely together at the minute so i'd say yes to last resort and now the next one is a game called Money Puzzle Exchange, which is a really weird title. Let's see. Oh, Money Idol Exchanger, maybe? I have a different name for it here. I presume this is the same game. So, sorry whoever recommended this one if it's not, but this is what I'll be playing. It looks like a very cutesy puzzle game? Oh yeah, it looks like Magical Pop. You did pay the money, didn't you? You have to pay. No, actually, I didn't pay because I'm playing it on the Mister, so I just downloaded the ROMs. Don't tell anyone. I mean, I bought all of the Neo Geo games and ripped them all myself. So, when you pull down the joystick twice, you can pull up the line if the coin falls to the ground, it's game over. So be careful you don't lose a life. So what do I actually need to do? You can change if you have five coins. And then the coins become higher value. Okay, that's interesting. So it is just magical pop, but with money. And... Uh, oh, how much do I need in one go? Uh, I need to remember that whenever you put things down, they actually go up in value. And then when you get a thousand, then they disappear. I'm not really uh, getting used to the controls for some reason. I don't know whether it's backwards compared to what I'm used to. So I'm having to press A to pick them up and B to drop them, which... Yeah, for some reason feels backwards. And I just managed to clear that line. And there we go, got a thousand there. I feel like, yeah, this would be a good game if I had an arcade stick, but for some reason, I'm really not feeling these controls very easily. Oh no, I'm running out of space. Yeah, that worked. 
kind of weird music. It doesn't really fit. I mean, it's trying to be really cutesy, so... I'd give that a pass, but only if I got used to the controls. Pretty good game. Uh, next is a game called Crossed Swords. Okay, there's two of them. Let's try the first one. Hopefully everything looks and sounds okay. This is only like the third time that I've actually tried playing and recording using this setup. And it's only a temporary setup, like I keep saying, until we get the game room very, very soon. I can't wait. Then I'll have a proper setup and then maybe I can actually try doing some live streams. Let me know if that's something you'd like me to do. I don't know whether to do them here on YouTube or over on Twitch instead. Whoa, okay, this is, this is different. This is uh, kind of a first, I wouldn't really call it first person. What would you call this? Third person hack and slash, but like from a punch out style perspective. Interesting. I don't know whether there's a lot of skill involved though. I don't really know how how you would block. You can put a shield up, okay. And then when they're in the background, you can throw stuff at them, I guess. It's a nice idea, but in terms of gameplay, maybe it doesn't work that well. Yeah, this is just weird. And the hills were scrolling in the wrong direction. I can see where they were coming from. I'll give them points for trying something new, as that was a complaint I had earlier, but... Strange. That's all, I, <laughs> that's all I really have to say about this. Strange. Very weird. Maybe there's like punch-out style reading the opponent and trying to fight back properly, but I seem to be getting by with uh, good old mashing of the buttons. Oh, of course. It's a Neo Geo game also as a power meter to build up. So, crossed swords, maybe I'd give it a pass, just about. Now, the next one is Magical Drop, which is the game I was talking about a minute ago with that money puzzle exchanger game. And this is where I think they got the idea from, or maybe the other way around. And of course, this is Data East. Or maybe they got the idea from them instead. The, oh, yeah. Okay, so going from money exchange to this while the step down in graphics from one game to the other is pretty uh, jarring. This is a lot faster and the buttons are the right way around but in terms of how it looks money puzzle exchange or idle exchange definitely wins. Not just because it's got anime girls in it because this, this one's got a weird, weird looking anime girl, but yeah, you can tell it's a Data East game, I'll say that much. So, I don't really have much more to say about it. I'm sure you can tell everything there is to know about the game just from that. So, it's a pass for Magical Drop, but not by much. Now, the next one is called Ninja Commando. Ninja Commando, here we go. So I'm guessing this is either like Nam or like Shock Troopers. Let's find out. I love how quick it is to get into all these games. That's something I can definitely praise the Neo Geo for, the speed of the system. Okay, this is a weird intro. I think they were showing off their flying... Um, their flying letters there. Yeah, let's play as Joe. Okay, yeah, this is like Shock Troopers. Cool. Although... Instantly something very different. This one doesn't have different directional controls. So as you can see, I'm moving side to side, but only actually walking upwards. I love the fact that it's got the Metal Slug style flashing enemy bullets. It always makes them really easy to see. And nice flashing power-ups as well, so definitely give it points for that. In terms of gameplay, it's very simple so far. I don't know whether it would get much more complicated. It's basically a vertical scrolling shooter where you can stop moving forward. If that makes sense. I wonder if there is a way of aiming to the side. Maybe not. 
It's pretty interesting. I don't think I've actually played one of these games where you only ever aim forward. So, hmm, I'd say this is a basic game, but slightly entertaining. If that makes sense. I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Which I guess is a pass, because I don't hate it. Okay, now it's getting interesting. We've got a dodge button. We've got... That's the bomb attack. Pretty standard bomb attack there. And wow, that really made short work of that boss. Whoa, okay. Now there's three characters, and if you hold down the shoot button, they walk super, super fast. And now we're in a field sort of area. Whoa, and now we're turned into a tiger. Okay, this is pretty cool. Pretty different. I'd say the graphics can could do with some work. They're very bland. There's no real life to them. I don't know whether that makes any sense. Like, Shock Troopers had a lot more of a classic Neo Geo feel to them. But yeah, definitely enjoying this. I could definitely see myself playing it longer. But we have to move on because I've got a lot of games I want to get through. And the next one is Neo Turf Masters. Which is there. I think this is a golf game. So I don't know whether I'm really going to enjoy this much. Playing a golf game doesn't really sound that exciting. Especially for an arcade game. But from what I've seen, this is one of the best. There's certainly no Lee Carvello's put-in challenge though, is it? Good luck. Here we go. For some reason I'm on the final day already. So let's see if I can figure out what to do. I think that's put a bit of top spin on it. Nice and smooth graphics. Nice relaxing music, which is what you'd want from this sort of game. I don't know how much power I'm supposed to be hitting these with. More than that. Hmm. Maybe you have to line it up with the... No, the arrow at the top doesn't... Okay, that's cool. So you can angle the... Uh, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. That's going to go way to the left. Ah, actually, I missed the bunker. That is pretty good. Uh, I mean, it seems okay. But, uh, yeah, not something I can really see myself playing that long. Let's just finish this stage. I would need a really low power for this. Yay, there we go. Bogey. So, it's got a really nice style to it. I think if you like golf games, then you would enjoy this. But I can't really see myself playing it in the arcade, which is what you would kind of expect uh, Neo Geo to be. Maybe this was one of the home games only, I'm not really sure. So next up is a game called Magician Lord. Which I've played a little bit in the past at various game shows. This one is a, a platformer. And one of the first games for the system as well, I think. So we have move, shoot and jump. Which I think is going to be... Yeah, backwards on this controller. I'll have to sort out these controls. First of all, I have to say the graphics seem quite flat. If that makes any sense. Again, they feel very cheap, kind of Amiga style. Does that make any sense? I feel like this is a game that would be good if you actually wanted to put a lot of time into memorizing the level layouts and things like that. But it's just kind of weird. Like the character moves really slowly. You'd expect them to move faster for this style of game. Kind of feels like Altered Beast. It's also really weird that when you jump you move a lot faster than when you're standing still. When you're just walking normally I mean, so. And because the character's sprite is so tall it's kind of difficult to dodge the bullets, so. Yeah, and you can't jump when you get on the ladder. I don't know, this 
doesn't really feel like anything special, so I'm not really sure why everyone was recommending this. Probably going to say no to this one. It's only my first impressions. It does feel like a very early game for the system. Again, it's one of those games where I'm glad I didn't have to pay a lot of money to experience. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh on it, but... I don't really think it was as good as some people have made it out to be. Yeah, I'd probably say no to that one. So next is a game called Top Hunter. Don't know what this one's like. Don't know anything about this one, to be honest. So let's see what we've got here. And this is number 22 out of 35. But maybe I'll stop after this one and do the rest tomorrow, just so I can come back with a fresh mind. Okay, this seems pretty fun. It's a beat em up, but a really fast paced and cartoony one, which I definitely appreciate. They try something different. Looks like there's different layers to it as well. So, you can press up and down, maybe, to go to the different levels. It's a bit confusing, because you can't really tell what's in the foreground or the background, because of the way the graphics are. Okay, now I'm on a skateboard. Where did that come from? Kind of a Metal Slug-style background. Okay, this is a bit out of the blue. I feel like they just thought, yeah, we've got to throw a mini game in here somewhere. Let's give players something to uh, try and collect some bonus points. Collect some extra power ups. That was pretty cool. Didn't outstay its welcome for a bonus stage. And then we go back to fighting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then I get to keep all the power ups. Oh no! For a second, and then I got flattened. Okay, I think I've gotten back. Don't know why there's a guy there in a sleeping bag tied up to a tree. Very strange. And okay, now we're in a robot. Wow, yeah, I'm enjoying this. Very unique. It doesn't. It seems like things move at a nice, fast pace, so none of the gimmicks really outstay their welcome, which is always good. Yeah, never even seen this one before, so I feel like this might be a... I know people hate the word, but this might be a hidden gem. Although I don't like the fact that there's two different planes. I've never enjoyed that in games. That's one of the reasons why I couldn't really get into um, Guardian Heroes as much as I would have liked. But yeah, I can appreciate it. It's a good game, but... I don't know how to attack those now. Eh? Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's a really cool game. Give that one a pass. And, yeah, like I said, I'll probably end it there and do the rest of these games tomorrow. So thank you for watching so far. Okay, I'm back. It's a new day and we're on to the next game, which is called Blue's Journey. Here we go. I've heard of this one before, actually. I think this is on the, um, the eShop. Let me just adjust the camera a bit so it was how it was before. I think that's about right. And while doing that, I think I just calmed myself. And nice graphics from what I've played so far. From what I've seen so far, shall I say. Controls nicely. Not quite sure what the attack actually does yet. Looks like I just throw a leaf on the floor. And then you can pick enemies up when they've turned upside down and go in little mushroom houses. And let's see if that's any better. See the large river ahead? Yes. It's good if you know it. You can rent my boat. Ask for leaf made boat. Ask for boat made of mud. What? Indecision won't get you nowhere. I took too long to answer and he just decided that I wasn't worthy of his shop. How strange. What in. Uh, okay. That's interesting. You can actually press a button to shrink down to the size of a mouse. Very weird. 
game. I'm not sure why you'd want to... Oh, you can't attack when you're shrunk down. Yeah, weird game. It's like some weird, more basic version of... I don't even know what this is like. This is just strange. This is really strange. And now we have a really weird shop. Swim fin. Light safe. Let's have a spring flower to run faster. I wonder whether that's a power-up you can use straight away or whether... Okay, yeah, looks like it's something you get straight away. And I instantly died. And now I've got my leaf back. So I don't know what gave me that a different attack just then, but now I'm back to just having my basic leaf attack. But yeah, this game seems pretty fun. I'll see whether I can get to the end of this level. The attack's a bit strange, a bit difficult to get used to. And the buttons are still on the wrong way around. Right, what do I do here? Okay, that's weird too. Just jump onto the weird shaking tree. Okay. Round clear. So I'll give Blue's Journey a yes. I enjoyed that. Retro break approved. Next is a game called Ghost Pilots. Let's see what this one's about. Oh, it's another vertical shooter. I do enjoy my vertical shooters. Let's see whether this is a good one or not. Uh, okay, it's got a weirdly slow start. And I just pressed the wrong button. Okay, wow, this is a very slow-paced shooter compared to what I've been playing previously. Even the actual firing is very slow. Like, that's... I'm mashing the button as fast as possible, and that's as fast as the bullets are coming out. Also, it seems like I've got a very big hitbox. Again, maybe I kind of feel like this game doesn't really have an identity of its own, an identity to call its own. It just seems like an amalgamation of previous shooters in the genre so maybe it gets more interesting later on but this is very generic by the books kind of shooter so far i like the fact that they use the background as part of the level like you've got the tank going down the side there that's cool it gives it a little bit of believability the fact that the boats are on the water and those tanks are on the rafts there like everything feels like it has its place I love the um, colourful way the bullets change colours, very Metal Slug style, very Neo Geo. But uh, overall, yeah, nothing really that exciting about this one, it seems very slow. Maybe it's a more methodical style game, but there doesn't really seem to be much method to this. Just go backwards and forwards and keep holding down the shoot button. Yeah, I'm probably going to say a no to this one just because it seems very basic. And there's a lot better shooters that I've played so far. I can't remember what the names of them are because I'm recording the rest of this on a different day, so I'll have to have a look over my list and see which ones I gave a yes to. But uh, let's play it a little bit longer. Let's get to the end of this stage, see what the boss is like. Seems like quite a long stage. Usually on a shooting game like this, the level would be near the end now. There'd be like a big wall that you have to break down with a big boss tank behind it or some sort of weird robot transformation enemy, so I mean I guess that's good if you want your games to last a bit longer, but I'm not really feeling too enthusiastic about this one really let me know in the comments what you think from what you've seen so far again, because of how slowly the main character's moving I'm getting a bit of cramp in my thumb it would be better if I had an arcade stick, but unfortunately I don't. Well, I do, but not in the house at the minute because, obviously, you're going to get sick and tired of me talking about this, but everything's in a different house at the minute because we're moving, so... Hopefully all that will get sorted out soon. And here it is, of course, a giant tank. Just like I expected. Yeah, there is zero originality in this game. 
And I think I'm going to leave it there. I'll give a no to Ghost Pilots. Let's try instead a game called Super Psych Sidekicks. Or Super Sidekicks 2 or 3 or 4. Let's do what we did with um, Shogun something. Samurai Showdown, was it? And try the first one and then try the last one and see what was different. Oh, it's a football game. Okay, yeah, I really don't care about football, so it probably won't last long on this one. Why is FDR Germany? What? Okay, the court sideways, that threw me off. And why I'm called Ace. Where's the goal? I don't know. Is that my goal? I think I just tried to score an own goal there. Whoops. Let's see if any of the other buttons do anything. Man, I hate these kind of games. I never know who I'm controlling or where I'm supposed to be. Trying to move like there, just keep swapping characters around. I think I just tackled myself. I really don't know. That's enough of that. Let's see what the fourth one's like. See whether it improved over time. And then after this, we have a game called Spin Master, which maybe it's a tennis game. I'm not entirely sure. has some funky music and it looks like it's a lot more polished again just picking whatever just to get to the start of the game looks like it has a lot of options which is good for people who like this sort of game let's see whether it's actually any different to play let's see whether it's any better or easier it's got nicer graphics it's the first thing I noticed Wow, okay, completely different perspective. That's pretty interesting. And a scale in camera as well. Wow, they really did improve. And it actually seems a lot easier to control. Although, again, I don't know whether I'm aiming at the right goal or not. But yeah, very nice scaling. I have to say, this is a big, big step up over the first one. Nice animation, too. I think I was aiming for the right one then, because these red guys are going here. Damn it, and I lost. Okay, next game, Spin Master. There it is. Presuming it's a tennis game. Let's find out. So, Ghost Pilots was a no, Sidekicks was a no, Spin Master. Uh, oh great, it's uh, one of those Data East games with the weird, ugly characters. Okay, well it's not what I was expecting. It's definitely not a tennis game. It's a beat -em up a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Or a platformer, should I say. Action platformer? What would you call this? Seems pretty good, actually. Nice cartoony effects when you hit stuff. Very Neo Geo sound effect. I'm genuinely surprised about this. This is a lot better than I thought it would be. Again, I'm not really keen on the style. Technically, the graphics are good. They're nice and smooth. Nice big sprites. But, uh, yeah, I really don't like the ugly cartoony style. I much prefer the sort of cute and softer look that the Japanese games have over these European ones. But uh, yeah, this just looks like some... I don't even know, like weird... just weird. But I do like it. I'm gonna give this one a pass. Very nice cartoony graphics, and it doesn't make you wait around too long either between areas, which is what I don't like about some beat em ups. This kind of reminds me a bit of Gunstar Heroes, but without guns. So, just Star Heroes? Yo Yo Heroes, maybe? Maybe they should have called it Yo Yo Heroes instead. 
I think Spin Masters kind of gives you the wrong impression. Or maybe I was just given the wrong impression thinking that it was a tennis game for some reason. I don't know why I thought it was a tennis game. But yeah, definitely enjoying this. I'll definitely play that one some more. So give that a big yes. Well done, Data East. And next is Galaxy Fight. And we haven't got that many more left. Galaxy Fight is number 27. Oh, 35, so nearly there. Pretty rocking intro, I like this. Really cool anime an uh, animation as well. Galaxy Fight. Galaxy Fight. Okay, I'm presuming this one is a fighting game. Again, I might be wrong. Is it a beat em up? Okay, it is a fighting game, cool. I think if I have to pick between fighting games or beat-em-ups, I probably would pick fighting games. Just because I don't like waiting f to clear the enemies out of the area before I can move on. Um, the controls seem a bit delayed on this compared to some of the other ones that I've played so far. It's definitely not up to the same standards as um, Garo, Mark of the Wolves, which I think is the high point yeah, it seems like it's kind of difficult to be able to attack on this one. And the graphics seem quite dreary. I mean, I get they were going for that. Because of the sort of dark future style that they're going for by lots of it. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't choose to play this if it wasn't for this video. So, are we going to give this a no? And yeah, the controls seem really really sluggish and I really didn't manage to get a few hits and then or maybe I'm just really bad so galaxy fight is a no now next is a game called prehistoric isle which I think is another data east game uh, prehistoric isle 2 maybe doesn't look like the first ones on here Let's see what this is like. Side scrolling shooter? That power up looks familiar. Is this a game by a company that we've already seen before? Whoa, that was unexpected. That's cool. It's also very loud, but we just turn that down a bit. There we go. Don't know why this one was so loud compared to the other ones. Wow, yeah, this is cool. This is not what I expected at all. I expected something like um, Joe and Mac, Caveman Ninja, if you've heard of that game. I feel like this one might be the same by the same company that made that one that I said looked like... Um, um, oh, what's that? Okay, what's that film called? It's Blade Runner. Nice 3D animation on the characters and the enemies here. Yeah, very nice. And the ship actually moves at a fair speed right off the bat as well, which is great. Oh, didn't quite manage to make it up there. Yeah, definitely giving this one a pass. Let's see what the boss is like at the end of the stage before we move on to the next game way. I love the unique idea of uh, fighting off dinosaurs as well. That's something you don't really see very often. So definitely give this game extra points for being unique as well. Unlike that last shooter that we played, one of the World War II style planes and tanks. This one is definitely a more interesting take on the genre. Defend people, okay, that's different. And I think this is the first one of these games that I've played where you can actually hold the shoot button down and it doesn't just charge something up. Okay, so I have to try and fight off the enemies here while everyone tries to get into that container there. Did I make it? I think so. No, I died at the same time. Let's 
let's continue. That wasn't fair. I thought I'd managed to get past them. At least it gives you loads of power-ups. Okay, maybe I'll keep playing this until I get to the next section then, because that was a very short intro before you get to the boss there. I forgot these are all arcade games actually as well, so if you do die you can just put in another pound or whatever, another credit, and just carry on playing. So that's cool, even if it does feel a little cheaty. But it's good if you want to see more of the game. That's how I've finished a lot of shooting ups, is to just keep continuing in from the checkpoints. I'm not good enough to one cc anything, unlike some people. Whoa, giant dinosaur there. Although it didn't stay around. I don't know what the different power-ups do, or I'd have to play it more to figure that out. Really cool graphics and animation, I would have been really impressed. I love the fact that they put those little FMV scenes in there as well, where you go from one place to the other. Yeah, this is really good. Maybe it's scrolling a little slower than I would like. I'd like it to be a bit faster paced. I think that's been a complaint that I've had from quite a few of these games. Although the action's fast, the actual scrolling speed's quite slow. But yeah, the levels have a nice feel to them. They're not too drawn out. Okay, here we go. Here's a boss. I love these boss screens in shoot em ups like this. Is that the boss? Yes. It was just foreshadowing before. Okay, am I actually going to be able to hit it? I don't think I'm actually doing any damage yet, so I probably shouldn't have used that bomb before. Whoa, how do I avoid them? The character's hitbox is quite big, so it doesn't really lend itself well to dodging lots of bullets and patterns like that, unless you stay really far back like that. And the bullets are quite big as well. It feels like all the sprites are like enlarged compared to what I'm used to. But that's not really bad. And there we go. He is down. Definitely giving that one a yes. Very cool. Now the next one is called Eight Man. No idea what this one could be about. Okay, first impressions, it seems very cheap. There we go, if I move like that, you can see me a bit better. Normal, let's see, is this a beat em up? Looks like it. Yeah, oh, nice fast movement speed. Kind of reminds me of a really fast version of Ninja Warriors. And different power ups as well. Some laser power ups there. It does feel very cheap, like Valis kind of quality. Not that that's bad, and not that Valis is a bad game, but you know, that sort of big, clunky sprites moving side to side. But yeah, not bad. Maybe I would. That's a very predator ripoff of a character design. I think I'd give this one a pass. Just about. Let's do one more area, because that was really fast. Let's get a bit more of a feel for the game. Whoa! Okay, I'm glad I stuck with it, because this is very different. Really fast scrolling stage here. Weird controls, like I'm trying to turn backwards, but you can only turn around if you jump. Which is a bit strange. And now I've got loads of trails coming behind me. In fact, it doesn't really seem like I need to do anything. Am I invincible? I don't really know. This is a bit of a strange choice to have this as the second part of the level. I feel like this would be better as a bonus stage or something. Okay, here we go. Here's the boss. And I instantly got hit by it. Okay, that was weirdly easy. Let's see what the next area is like. Will it be back to a normal scrolling stage? Warning! First stage boss. Oh, okay, that wasn't the boss. This is the boss. And now I'm stuck in a single screen. And for some reason the boss is really small. I was expecting him to be a lot bigger than that. 
And if he wants to use a special attack, then I'll do the same. Yeah, kind of weirdly static boss fight. I was expecting like a big robot or something. I'm not sure how to dodge that. Probably have to jump over it. Let me come back. Okay, and he's dead. He just folds away to nothing. I'll give that one a pass, but a light pass. Let's say that. Now next is Puzzle Dupon. I don't know whether that has any relation to Panel Dupon. We'll find out. I thought that was just a Nintendo property though, so maybe not. Oh, it's just Puzzle Bubble. Puzzle Bubble. Bubble Bubble. Puzzle Bubble? Not Bubble? I always get confused by that. Buster Move. Let's just call it Buster Move. I mean, you can't really go wrong with this game, but uh, maybe not exactly pushing the system to its limits. Although I do really enjoy these games. In fact, the original Puzzle Bubble is the one game that I think of when I think of Neo Geo over anything else because I'm not sure what that did because that's the one that I remember playing all the time at the arcades in France back in the day when we used to go on family holidays yeah nice game but kind of pointless when the other game exists which is just a more polished version of this unless this was some alternate version like, when the game first came out or something, I don't know. Obviously the modern equivalent is Bubble Witch Saga, unfortunately. People think of that as an original game, but it's just a complete rip-off of Puzzle Bubble. But what can you do? That's just what happens with time. People forget the origins of things. So yeah, give it a pass, although it's very derivative. But a pass is a pass. Now next is a game called Twinkle Star Sprites. And when I first found out about this game, this is another one that I already know about. When I first found out about this one, I was actually kind of disappointed because I wanted it to be like a Toho style shooter, but it's actually more of a multiplayer shoot 'em up where you have to fight people on a different screen. Kind of similar to that. Toho game that's a 0 0.5 or 0 0.7 where you have one character on each side and you have to try and fight and send stuff over to the other screen which is a neat idea but as I prefer single player games something like this where you're fighting against someone isn't really my favourite style of shooter if that makes any sense but it definitely looks nice there seems to be some slowdown, but I don't know whether that's intentional in order to make the impact of what you're sending over to the other side more meaningful. Wait, I'm noticing a little bit of slowdown here and there. Yeah, quite a bit actually when all these fireworks are going off. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm doing in order to send stuff over either, but somehow I won that. I really don't know. Let's try the next stage. I like the little map screen and there's some sort of story going on but I'm going to skip it in the interest of time for this video. Let's see if I can actually figure out what I actually need to do here. So okay so I sent so in that one they both sent four over and it looks like you can sort of volley the attacks back and forth so if they send you something like these? Oh, it wouldn't let me hit them ones for some reason. Let's try and use a bomb and see what that does. I don't know what that did. Okay, yeah, I don't get it. But I'm going to give it a pass because it is a fun idea for a game. Now, next up is King of Fighters. There's a lot of them. Let's again start with the first one and then try the latest one in the series.
And of course, this is probably the game that the Neo Geo is most well known for, so I'm sure a lot of you watching have already played this and experienced King of Fighters before, so I'm just going to see how it stacks up to the other fighting games that I've played for this video. And um, let's see, it seems very responsive, unlike that weird futuristic robot one. I don't get it with these fighting games, like they all control exactly the same from what I've played, like they all have the same, whatever you'd call that, side down right attack. But I don't really know how unique you could make one, like they're all appealing to the same market so it makes sense for them to all feel the same. But it would be nice if there was like more different games, I know I've got a few more fighting games coming up as well. and. It's not really something I've tried to get into before, like, I've played a little bit of Street Fighter and stuff with friends, but it's nothing I've really tried, if that makes sense. It seems quite difficult, this one does. But yeah, I can imagine at the time being really impressed by the, uh, the graphics and the animation and stuff. So that was King of Fighters 94, now let's try the latest one on the Neo Geo at least, which was King of Fighters 2003. The Neo Geo had a really long lifespan. It's really cool to see a game from 94 and a game from 2003. Um, single versus maybe? Yeah, so it's really cool to see a game from 93, 94 and 2003 show up on the same uh, I think I've done something wrong there. Let me uh, reset that. I think I accidentally went on to multiplayer mode and it wouldn't let me control the other player then. So bear with me one second while I restart it. I have to say that the menu isn't as intuitive as the first one. I'm just gonna. I don't know what team is. Let's try this. Okay, that's better. That let me in. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So the graphics have had a huge upgrade. The um... oh god, I've got no idea what's going on, but the uh, sprite animation seems a lot more fluid. There's a lot going on in the background. Oh well, yeah, big upgrade. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't know why there's three health bars all of a sudden. But I seem to be doing better than last time, so that's good. It feels quite heavy, like it doesn't jump very high, which is a bit weird for fighting games because I'm used to like slowly like floating off into the sky. It doesn't really seem to be fighting back, maybe that's why I'm doing so well. You know, what I seem to be able to do is that lightning attack. But yeah, I'd say, excuse me, I'd say that's better than the first one. So give King of Fighters a pass. Now the next one is called Zapapa. I've never heard of this one before, so let's see what this is like. Suitable for all ages. Why bother telling me then? Okay, is this one of those cutesy platformers? If it's a single screen platformer, I'll be really excited. Yes, it is! And what do I need to do on this one? Just punch things. Okay, uh, first, first thought, it's not very clear on what you need to do. At all. Do I need to pick those little star things up? How do I attack the enemies? Definitely not as user friendly as Bubble Bubble. That's like the... Okay, do I send the little people over to fight for me? What is going on? Hurry? What am I... Why did I... What's... I don't understand. Let's bring these guys over to the ballerina and let them jump on her head. I think I'm beginning to get it. You have to 
save the little creatures and then use them to stop the enemies from being able to move and then that sets off this annoying alarm sound and then you throw them on the enemy and then you can walk into them and stun them or something. I don't know why you need more than one of the little creatures to be able to do that when you can just... Maybe it's more powerful if you use more than one. I'm still very confused. I think one of the most important things for these single screen games is that they're easy to pick up and play and this is very much not pick up and play. I might even give this one a no to be honest. It just seems a bit unnecessary having to do all this extra stuff. Although that level did go a bit faster. I'm going to play a few more and see how my impressions... Okay, so you don't actually need... Yeah, I don't... I don't get it. So, you can just hit the enemies and then walk into them, so you don't need the little creatures following you. So, what's the point of the little creatures? Yeah, this one's too convoluted to be good as an arcade game, so... Unfortunately, although I like that style of game, I'm giving this one a no. And I've got two left. There's one called Waku Waku 7, and then there's one just called Puzzles, which I'm guessing is a puzzle game. I think this one's a fighting game, from what I know. Wow, very nice menu. I like how big those graphics are there. Really nice sprites, as usual. Very King of Fighters. Oh my god, everything is just a King of Fighters ripoff. It's just... It's just the same, again. Same attacks. Same specials. I mean, this one seems a bit empty compared to King of Fighters. Nice screen um, zooming, but honestly... If you've played one fighting game on the system, you've played them all. But I guess it wouldn't be fair of me to put some other ones in a yes, and then put this one in a no, so... Even though I don't know what I'm doing, I'll probably give this one a yes, because I'm sure that people who enjoy their fighting games would enjoy this. But it's not really for me. Let's see whether I can kill this android. I have a really, really strong punch. Yeah, there we go. So I'll give that one a yes by default just because it's well made. But it's not my kind of game. And the last one is called Puzzled. Not Puzzled Upon, not Puzzled Bubble. Puzzled. I wonder if it has a different name. Let me just... Okay, so I'm back, and it turns out that I did actually already have the game, but it's under a different name. It's not called Puzzled, it's actually called Joy Joy Kid. So, I didn't actually know that. And this headphone is so loose now, I seriously need to get new ones. Look at it, it's just like hanging off my head. So let's see what Puzzled slash Joy Joy Kid is all about. Uh. Okay, it's Tetris. Can't go wrong with Tetris. Oh, the controls are backwards, for one thing. Oh, that is weird. Why do they turn that way? And... Yeah, that would... There's no way of getting them to turn the other way either. That is an oversight. That's a really bad oversight. Okay, that's pretty interesting how... Okay, am I meant to get the balloon to fly up instead? Yeah, I don't know why the controls are backwards. Maybe that's something to do with getting around the copyright of it not being an official Tetris game or something. Um... Uh, but yeah, maybe the concept is good. 
having to get that balloon to fly off. Gives you something different to think about than just making lines for the sake of it. Although it does seem a bit easy, like once the balloon's out it can just fly off and you don't have to worry about it. Just give it a, more, a few more levels. Yeah, I can't get used to the, the fact that the, <laughs> the way you rotate them is backwards compared to normal. That's really, really throwing me off. Oh my god, yeah, it's really messing up my brain. I'm so used to playing Tetris normally. That playing it this way around is so weird. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't do this. I feel like there's a good concept here, but the execution is very bad. And the fact that there's gravity as well, you can't really tell what's going to happen when you make a line. And now it's telling me to hurry up. I can't hurry up because I've, I've only got the blocks that you've given me. No, I mean, why would you play this when you can play Tetris Plus? which also has a puzzle mode, but it's a million times better. This is just like a bad imitation of Tetris Plus. Just replace the... Uh, the I was going to say Inspector Guy, what would you call him? Explorer? Replace the Explorer with a hot air balloon. That has a mind of its own. Yeah, I don't really get... I feel like this game could have done with a few more months in development to really flesh it out. It seems very difficult to be able to get the right pieces you need as well, like... Yeah, this is just more frustrating than fun, so unfortunately, Puzzled, or whatever the other name was, I'm going to give a no, unfortunately, although I do like the idea, but like I said, good idea, bad execution, not worth it. And that's everything, that is 35 games for the Neo Geo, kind of a mixed bag, some good and some bad. Let me know in the comments which games I've missed. Let me know some of your favourite games for the system. Did you ever own a Neo Geo AES or MVS? Uh, that would be really interesting to know. I would love to own one myself at some point in the future. But thank you so much for watching. Go and check out my main channel if you want to see weekly retro gaming videos. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, subscribe, press like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.